Hi guys, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Carolina and I work with data. If you're interested in data engineering, machine learning or technology, hit the subscribe button for my weekly videos. I'm going to show you the most egregious Python code you can write that sadly many beginners do write and as I recently found out not just beginners. I really don't want you to be that person so next to the diabolic anti-pattern I'm going to show you how the code should actually look like. I am not a Python ninja or anything like that but I can distinguish utterly from a decent code. So yeah let's do it. Okay so this is the I'm laughing because it gave me so much pleasure to write it. It's a very simple program. It just prints what items I've got. And as you can see, it works. So we can move on, right? No. So what's wrong with it? Well, everything is wrong with it, but I can see main six things that I'm going to fix on the screen so that you don't make those mistakes ever again. Number one, I really need to start with this one. No one's gonna be friends with you if you write your code like this. Writing try and accept pass block. Okay, let me explain why this is the single most awful thing you can write in Python. I recently experienced this on my own skin, but then I found out that I'm not the only one. People write articles about how awful this thing is. So basically, Let's have a look at this example. We're saying try doing everything that is inside this block. So the program tries to print welcome to my program statement. And then there is a new variable, my name, Carolina with a C. But my name is Carolina with a K. So the program tries to change that variable and mutate that string to contain K instead of C. Okay, that's it. Then we say accept which means if there are any errors do this and do what in this case if there are any errors pass yeah pass ignorance is bliss let's move on do you understand how risky but also how awful just simply awful this piece of code is it is risky because the program will continue the execution even if there are some errors and you are just not going to be aware of those errors at all. And that is risky because maybe later on in the program something will depend on that piece of code being successful, right? And it is simply awful because it doesn't give you the stack trace, you know, the error log when you get an error. So you're not going to be aware of what went wrong. So debugging this is just going to be a nightmare. You're going to spend days, days trying to find that one error. I mean, imagine having a huge piece of code, like 1000 lines of code written by someone else a year ago. I mean, good luck trying to find what is throwing the error if you don't have a stack trace. Okay, so let's get rid of this tragedy right now and let's run the program and as you can see there was an error which leads me to mistake number two trying to mutate a string by mutate i mean alter or change so in this example i'm trying to mutate the variable my name but i can't so if you want to change something in a string you must create a new string a new variable and assign whatever you want to that. You cannot mutate the existing string. So in this case, we can simply use the function um, replace, which is going to replace uh, the letter C with the letter K, because I'm Carolina with a K. Mistake number three. I'm going to specify this as number three because I can't look at this code anymore. Using the camel case. If you don't know what camel case is, it basically means joining the words together and then capitalizing the second word and the third word and so on and so on versus snake case, which is joining the words with an underscore. And I know what some of you might be thinking. Python allows the use of both types of cases. So I can pick my favorite one, right? Some of you might know this already, but there exists something like PEP8 standards, which are Python style guide standards. They define how your code should look like and they are the standard across 
you know, the academia, all the businesses, you just should write your code in this way. And if you don't, your code looks messy and unprofessional. According to PEP8 standards, function names and variable names should be written in snake case. Also, global variables should be written in capital letters. There are more rules, um, so I'm linking the PEP8 websites in the description below so you can check them out. That leads me to mistake number four, using global variables. See, here I've got one. What's bad with global variables is that they can be accessed and modified by any function in this file, which makes it difficult to remember or reason about every possible use. And also it makes it difficult to write unit tests later. If you can avoid using global variables, you should. So here clearly we can avoid using the my age variable. So let's move it to main and move on. Mistake number five, unpythonic looping. If you studied Java or C++ or C Sharp before, you might be used to writing for loops like this, defining an index and initiating it to zero, then finding the length of your array and then looping and then at the end incrementing the index. In Python, we don't do this. I mean, look, we can, it works, but it shouldn't be written in this way because it's unpythonic. And the reason why it is unpythonic is because Python has a better way of doing it, which automatically handles both index and finding the length of the array, which makes it less error prone and just easier to use. So let's rewrite this in the Pythonic way. And as you can see, I didn't use an index and I didn't have to find the length of the array. Mistake six, last but not least, not specifying data types in function parameters and return types. Now, I'm sure you've been told that you don't have to do it in Python, which makes Python great, right? Just because you don't have to doesn't mean you shouldn't. It improves your code readability immensely. It is so useful to have it that you should always write it. So let's add it to my little program. On that note, let's not just add the data types, but also let's rename those variables to something that makes sense. You should always do it. You should always name your variables to something that makes sense, that is helpful to someone who reads the code. You're not writing those variable names for yourself. I mean, as well, but mostly for other people who are the consumers of your functions. Okay, now let's compare the egregious code we begin with, with the refactored code. Of course, this program is silly. It doesn't do anything useful, but I hope I managed to illustrate a couple of points that are clear and easy improvements that you can incorporate into your code straight away. This is mostly taken from my own experience working with other people's code and refactoring it. So I think this is like real world kind of Python refactoring. I'm pretty sure I missed something. So if there are any other Python mistakes that are very common that you can think of, then let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and I'll see you next Thursday. Ciao.